Hello, Josie Wales here and welcome to this short video. This video is complementary to the post I made on the forums entitled The Relationship Between Soft Factors, Morale and Fatigue. So specifically in this video, we're going to look at the factors that affect morale. There are two factors and I have named them Combat Stress and Combat Shock. Combat stress is the persistent impact on morale caused by casualty buildup. And combat shock is the temporary impact on morale caused by suppression. So for the first test setup, we have got a rifle squad consisting of 12 men. They are a conscript unit with minus two leadership and are poorly motivated so have minus two motivation modifier as well the reason i've picked such a poorly experienced led and motivated unit to do this test with is that any effects we do see will be magnified by the fact that they are easily affected by pretty much everything the platoon hq is nearby and is within c2 link the platoon HQ just happens to be a veteran unit with high leadership and high motivation. So plus one to leadership and motivation modifiers. To begin the test, we move the squad over the wall so that they can become visible to nearby enemy machine gun where they start to take fire and become suppressed. As we see the suppression indicator start to move up and rounds incoming, their morale state starts to drop down through cautious. And as suppression indicator starts to increase, they then drop into morale state of nervous. Up to this point, no casualties have been sustained, so we can see that the effect on morale has been caused by suppression and is therefore combat shock. However, that quickly changes as a casualty is taken. We can see that the unit quickly then becomes rattled, down through shaken and into panic. Note that the suppression indicator has become almost full and the unit is within the C2 link of the platoon HQ. Because of the immediate impact of taking casualties, further combat shock has been suffered. In the panic state, the troops are basically trying to remove themselves from the perceived threat and they will not respond to any orders from you, the player. The panic state, however, is only temporary. And after some time, based on the unit's experience and leadership, it will start to recover. Back up through Shaken. And as the effects of the combat shock continue to wear off, they continue up through Rattled and back into Nervous. We do still see some residual suppression in the suppression indicator but this is not because any more fire is incoming, it's simply the squad is inexperienced and has low leadership, and it does take time for that suppression indicator to drop off under those conditions. As the suppression indicator returns to zero, we can see that the unit has settled into a nervous morale state. This is now a persistent morale state and is a result of combat stress because of the buildup of casualties within the unit, with one casualty wounded and another lightly wounded. The squad is still within close visual range of C2 with the platoon HQ. Resetting this scenario to run it again with the exact same squad, with the exact same motivation and leadership. The only difference this time is that the platoon HQ is being kept well away from the squad. 
So we can see in the chain of command, we've got a red dot indicator by the platoon HQ, and there are no C2 links between the squad and the platoon HQ. Of course, when you run a simulation like this over and over again, it never quite repeats itself in exactly the same way. It does take a bit more time for this squad to start to come under fire, but eventually it does take incoming fire and starts to feel the effects of suppression. And as the suppression indicator starts to fill up, we again start to see the effects of combat shock and the squad moves from okay through cautious into nervous. Down into rattled and with the suppression indicator around about 60-70% the squad becomes shaken. It can be clearly seen that this morale state is due to the suppression as no casualties have been sustained. Just to reiterate, there is no C2 link between this squad and its platoon HQ. Shaken troops will cower where they are. You as the player will not be able to issue them any commands. However, the state is only temporary. And as the effects of combat shock wear off and the suppression reduces, we see the unit move up back through rattled, nervous, up into cautious and finally back to okay. Again there's still some residual suppression due to their inexperience, poor leadership and motivation but they've recovered to okay because no casualties have been sustained and therefore they have not suffered any impact of combat stress. Once recovered I moved them around again in an attempt to get a casualty, which does happen. You can see that the unit has then become panicked. One casualty has been sustained and the suppression indicator has pretty much gone all the way up, so around about 90%. After a few moments, the suppression indicator starts to drop back down. And as it does so, the unit starts to recover up through the morale states. Again, we see here the temporary effect of combat shock wearing off. And as the unit moves up through rattled into nervous, and no further recovery is made. The persistent morale state of the unit is now at nervous, and this is because they have taken a casualty and therefore are suffering the effects of combat stress. So far, we can make three conclusions. Number one, that suppression causes combat shock, which is a temporary reduction in morale that can be recovered from. Number two, that casualty buildup causes combat stress, a persistent effect on morale that can be seen once the effects of suppression have worn off and cannot be recovered from. And number three, C2 has no effect on combat stress, which is the persistent morale state caused by casualty buildup. So what benefit is there to a squad of being within C2 link, if any? In an attempt to answer that, will run a third scenario. Here we have again our inexperienced, badly led, not particularly motivated squad. This time there is a platoon HQ nearby but there is no C2 link between them because the platoon HQ is on the other side of a barn and also just outside of earshot. Moving the squad out into the arc of fire of a German machine gun they start to become suppressed and start to feel the effects of combat shock as their morale state moves from okay through cautious, down through nervous and into rattled. Moving the platoon HQ from behind the barn 
we can still see that the squad is in a rattled state with the suppression around about 50%. And as the C2 icon reappears, we can see that the morale state has recovered up to nervous with no change in the suppression. We could conclude at this point that by moving the platoon HQ into C2 range of the squad has provided the squad with resistance to the effects on morale of combat shock. But to check that what we're seeing is a true effect, we should be able to see the opposite happen if a squad which is being suppressed has its platoon HQ move out of C2 range. And here we have our squad again suffering some light suppression. Its morale state is okay and it has a close visual C2 link with the platoon HQ near the barn. After a few moments, the platoon HQ gets up and moves away from the squad around the other side of the barn. If we look at what happens in the C2 link, we can see that as the platoon HQ moves behind the barn, out of sight, the C2 link disappears. And we see the morale state of the squad drop down to cautious with no change in the suppression. And of course we can predict that as the effects of combat shock wear off, that the morale state will return to okay as no combat stress has been suffered as there are no casualties. So for our final conclusion, we can say four things. Number one, that suppression causes combat shock, which is a temporary reduction in the morale state, which can be recovered from. Number two, the casualty buildup causes combat stress, which is a persistent effect on morale that can be seen once the effects of suppression have worn off and it cannot be recovered from. Number three, that C2 has no effect on combat stress. And number four, C2 provides resistance to combat shock. More information on this and other aspects of the game can be found on my post, The Relationship Between Soft Factors, Morale and Fatigue.